spicy sausage rice. Whatever you're cooking, the secret to making great food is to ensure you lock in every last ounce of flavor in that pan. And this spicy sausage rice does exactly that. Take the spicy sausages and pierce that skin, because I want all that delicious spicy sausage meat out of its casing. And you get more flavor from the sausage when you take them out of the casing. Sausage is ready. Turn on the gas. Bread onion, less acidic than a big white Spanish onion, and a lot more flavorsome. A tablespoon of olive oil. A tablespoon only, because I want all that fat coming out of the sausages to sort of really help flavor the onions. Onions in. And the onions go in first because you can never rush cooking an onion. It's really important to sort of give them five to six minutes in the pan so you can really start to caramelize them. And now for my pepper. Slice round, wasting nothing. I want to see that sort of little core, those pips in the center. No fine diced pepper. The rice is going to be cooking for 20 minutes, so I want the veg to sort of have texture after it's cooked. Pepper's in. A bit of garlic, two nice cloves. Just slap down, off with the shell. Garlic in. Now, I want to turn up the gas, get the pan nice and hot, because the minute that sausage goes in, everything cools down, and you'll end up boiling the peppers and the onions and the garlic. So heat up to maximum, and then just make a well in the center. In. Now, start stirring quickly. And this is where you get so much more bang for your buck out of the sausages because the skin's off. And the real flavor of that spicy Italian sausage is going to come through. What's great about this recipe is that you can use any type of sausage to get the flavor and the heat you want. I've gone for the spicy Italian, but it's just as good with merguez or chorizo. A teaspoon of paprika in. Give it that really nice smoky flavor. Rice in. And we're going to sort of basically sear the rice. We call it in the kitchen blasting the rice, where we sort of soak the rice for 30 seconds, and it takes on all that flavor. Next, white wine. So the wine sort of deglazes the pan and washes all that flavor from the bottom of the pan into the rice. Stock in, bring it up to the boil, turn it down, and let it simmer. Mmm. Double stock to rice. Turn that gas down and let it simmer for 12 to 15 minutes. And just give it the occasional stir. Keep an eye on it. Now, get ready to finish it. Slice spring onions, dice sweet, juicy tomatoes, and roughly chop earthy, flat leaf parsley. Spring onions in, tomatoes in. Off with the gas. Really important. Otherwise, everything becomes overcooked. Flat leaf parsley in. But look at the volume in that pan now. That is an amazing way to take spicy Italian sausages to a completely different level. Beautiful. Amazing recipes don't necessarily have to include meat. Cooking vegetarian dishes will reduce your food bills without compromising on taste and flavor. Here are three more recipes to satisfy even the keenest carnivore, like me that will max out on veg and won't break the bank. Starting with spicy black beans with feta and avocado. First, in a pan, heat olive oil. Add chopped onion and fry until soft. Then finely slice garlic and chili. Add cumin, cinnamon and black beans, then combine. Cook together until deliciously soft. These small beans come dried or in tins and are a great cheap ingredient to make dishes more substantial. To serve, dollop the black bean mixture on crunchy tortillas. Top with cube ripe avocado, chopped fresh coriander and crumbled salty feta cheese. Spicy black beans with feta and avocado, a dish that's filling, frugal and tastes fantastic. My next great veg recipe is leek and greer rosti with fried eggs.
in a hot pan. Sweat shredded leeks along with a knob of butter and season. Next, great parboiled potatoes and gria, a hard Swiss cheese with a great nutty flavour. Then combine with the softened leeks. In a pan, heat oil and a little butter. Spoon in the potato, leek and cheese mix. Cook gently until golden and crisp underneath. Then slide onto a plate, flip over and return to the pan to finish cooking. Finally, for the perfect topping, fry two eggs and place them on top of the rosti. Top with fresh tarragon. Leek and Gria rosti with fried eggs, a simple but substantial dish that makes the most of hearty root veg. A dish that takes as much time to write on a blackboard as it does to cook. Chickpea, cumin and spinach koftas with tahini dressing. In a blender, put tin chickpeas, cumin seeds, paprika and turmeric, and blitz to a paste. Next, wilt spinach in olive oil and chop finely. Then add to the chickpea mixture. Sprinkle in gram flour, made from finely ground chickpeas, then shape golf ball sized chunks of the mixture using a spoon and rest in the fridge. When ready to cook, heat oil in a frying pan. Shallow fry the koftas until golden brown on all sides. Then rest them on kitchen paper to absorb any excess oil. For an easy dipping sauce, mix yogurt with a dollop of tahini and a squeeze of lemon. Then stir in freshly chopped coriander. A mouth-watering dish that's perfect for sharing. Chickpea, cumin and spinach koftas with tahini dressing. My next recipe is a proper British classic that's super simple to cook and costs next to nothing, a delicious apple crumble. Crumbles are the perfect way to use fruit when it's in season. There's lots of it about, it's nice and cheap, but most importantly, the fruit's at its absolute best. First off, I'm gonna make a really nice light caramel. Pan on, nice and low. Great two apples. And this helps to almost sort of pure the apple so much quicker. And there's a lot of flavour in the skin, so don't worry about peeling the fruit. Whether it's pears, plums, peaches, the flavour's in the skin. Nice. To start the caramel, a couple of tablespoons of sugar. The sugar helps to get rid of the tartness in the apple. A touch of cinnamon. That starts to make it a little spicy. Open up your vanilla and just scrape out all those seeds. Now, this just makes it light and fragrant. All those seeds in to the sugar. When making caramel, be patient and always swirl the dish instead of stirring it. When the sugar goes brown, add the apple. Mm. That starts to sort of cool down the caramel, but it gives it a really nice sort of caramelized puree. Apple's almost disintegrating. It smells incredible. Turn the gas down. Slice up two apples. It's a crumble that's got no frills. Straightforward. No faffing around. No peeling of the skin. I want them to sort of stand out from the caramel. Apples in. Now those nice thick chunks of apple are sort of almost bedding itself into the puree. Dried cranberries. Gives it that nice sort of shock in the texture. Sweet and chewy. I want it to sort of taste zesty, spicy, so sit the lemon zest on top of your apples and cranberry. Fresh lemon juice over. And that just gives that extra acidic kick. Takes the cranberries, the apples, the caramel, and the cinnamon to another level. Turn the gas off. Just let that sit. And let's concentrate on the crumble. Flour in. A couple of tablespoons of demerara sugar. Sugar helps to get the topping nice and crispy. Butter in. Give that a nice little sort of rub. What we're looking for is like a, a breadcrumb mixture. Lightly season it with a touch of cinnamon. And the demerara sugar sort of helps to get a nice fine crumble mix. And it stops the butter from sort of melting 
in that flour. So that's the basic crumble mix. But I'm not finished yet. Muesli. Two thirds crumble, one third muesli. Mix that in. If you haven't got muesli, then crunchy granola works brilliantly too. Lovely. Now, start off in the center and work your way around. I want the crispiness on the top, the puree on the bottom with the caramel, and then the texture in the center. A good tip, turn the gas back on. I want it bubbling before it goes in the oven, because then you've just got to cook the top. So as soon as you see that caramel starting to bubble down the side, in she goes. Let's go. Bake at 200 degrees Celsius for 12 to 14 minutes until golden brown. Smells amazing. Beautiful. Still bubbling. And look at it. A delicious but very simple crumble with apples at their absolute best. Beautiful. <laughs>